Hey, it's Matt with Rebel here. Today I want to talk about a framework or a way of thinking uh, that I use when I'm building with tools like Agent and Assistant. It's really helped me improve the outcomes. Like I've been able to build cooler stuff and help me learn about how to interact with AI. And it's pretty straightforward. I think the most important thing is that you're paying attention to the things that you're doing when you're using these tools. And they can be intimidating, right? These are new tools. One of the reasons we have to try things out and maybe even fail is because there is no guidebook. AI building, a lot of AI native coding is brand new. And that's really exciting because it means we get to be on the frontier of things, building apps that were not possible before. And I'm excited about it. But what it also means is that you can get into maybe like a doom loop uh, where you're asking AI to do something and it just ignores you and does something different. And then you ask it the same thing again um, and ignores you again, <laughs> like some kind of bad, you know, argument with someone. I'm tired of this whole thing. But I'm gonna share with you today something I've learned recently, a way of thinking about making those changes. And we're calling it test and commit or revert. And this is adapted from a really good blog post. I'll link it in the description that's written for software engineers. I changed <laughs> some of the concepts a bit and tweaked it and we're applying it to AI native building. This is for anyone who's trying to build with AI. Maybe you're not a software engineer. Maybe you've never built an app before. I'm gonna tell you how I build apps and I've built some pretty cool apps, uh, <laughs> not to toot my own horn. You know I'm the greatest. But the basic idea is that we're going, when we're building things, we're going to test those things out. And if they work, then cool, we're gonna keep on building. If they don't, we're gonna revert them or roll them back. This is possible because tools like Agent and Assistant have rollbacks and checkpoints, which means that at any time you click click a little button, this will like flash up on the screen somewhere, and you can go back to an old version of your code. Amazing, right? So the full sort of loop is, okay, I have this problem, this thing I want to do. I'm gonna break it down into really tiny steps, and then I'm going to test that step. I'm gonna write natural language, see what AI does, test that step. Did it work? If so, let's give it another prompt. If it didn't, Let's go back, let's roll back and go to our old checkpoint and try something new. What does this do? Well, number one, it teaches you how to prompt AI because if you find that you're continually prompting AI with things that don't work, I hate to break it to you, you need to change how you're prompting AI. Please enlighten me. And that's something I've learned, right? You learn how to interact with this thing just like you'd learn how to interact with a human, right? If you have a person on your team and you're always asking them to do stuff and they just blow you off all the time, well, you can continue to do that and continue to get ignored or you can think through how you want to communicate with them. You can think through new ways of relaying the same information. Or maybe you're just not giving them enough information, right? Maybe you need to go online and give them a URL. You can see the parallel I'm trying to draw here. Maybe you need to give them more context or more instructions or word things differently. That's what it means to learn how to interact with AI. And through this framework, if you pay attention to the results of the, your inputs, if you pay attention to the outputs for a given input, you can start to refine those things. And I have a lot of tutorials on how to work with AI on this channel. We just created a Reddit clone with a post in like 15 minutes with two prompts. That's okay. I'm going to post more, but that's kind of the point of the framework, right? And the smaller changes that you test, the more incremental the changes that you test, the less you have to worry about losing large pieces of work, right? You're probably saying, oh, hey, Matt, like, what if I go into build with AI and it just like overwrites my entire project or deletes my database or, you know, I worked for three hours and I have nothing to show with it. How can I relax when I messed up so bad? That's kind of possible. I do stuff like that uh, frequently, but I'm trying to move more towards this framework because it minimizes those losses, right? If I'm backing up my laptop or I'm I'm like scheduling uh, backups for, for like some data that I have. And I run a backup like every week or every month, right? And then like my laptop blows up or something, you know, I, I RMRF, you know, like a directory. No, no, we can't be gone. Kind of out of luck because a month is a long time and I probably lost a lot of stuff. But if I do those backups every week, uh, every day rather, or every hour, well, then I'm only limited to the work that I did in the last hour. And I'm like, I'm pretty slow anyway, right? Like I don't get that much done. <laughs> the bottom line is I get the job done. I like to think I get a lot of stuff done. And so it's the same thing with AI, right? If I prompt agent, if I prompt assistant, to a feature and it's a really tiny feature. And then I test it out and I'm like, we're good to go. I didn't break anything else. We move on and I go for another little tiny feature and then something breaks. Well, I literally know that the app just worked like two prompts ago. I can go click that um, rollback button, click that checkpoint button. We're gonna be fine. Same thing with assistant. If I'm like, okay, I'm gonna make a very small incremental change here. I'm gonna change this file. And then I look at the file and see what changed. Very low likelihood anything goes wrong. If I like look at the files that I'm changing, I can really pay attention to exactly 
what I'm implementing. So if you don't want a bunch of code wiped out, break your problems down, right? Maybe if I wanna build like a really fancy dashboard or something, I break it down into several components uh, that I know I can get working. Maybe I want a front end first with a map visualization. I have a specific framework I wanna use for that map. We're gonna build that first. And then I wanna add a database to store locations on the map. We're gonna add that next. And then I want a uh, user auth so people can log in and add their locations, right? We're gonna add these sequentially. And for each feature, we're gonna break those down into steps that I can chat with AI to implement. If we're thinking about this as a framework, right? First, see how small you can make your changes. Really dig in, start from first principles, one step at a time. It's gonna seem boring. It's gonna seem mundane and repetitive. That's kind of building, right? That's creating anything great, is being creative to come up with this idea and then doing the hard work to break that idea down into tiny little steps. Second, some of these things you do are still gonna fail, but that's the whole point of the framework. That's the whole point of being able to revert things. And as a matter of fact, in Replit, even without agent, even now without assistant, you can always roll back your changes. You can scrub between versions of your project at any time um, with version control. You don't even really need Git. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Take those small changes you broke down, figure out how to make them even smaller to minimize the potential for error, but also to learn how AI works and learn how to interact with AI. And as always, use rollbacks as your fallback mechanism for reverting things and checkpoints within Replit. You don't have to worry, kid. And if you pay attention to the little bits of this workflow that you find work really well, you're gonna improve how you build with AI. And that's really exciting. I think the biggest sort of leaps I've made in building with AI have come from reflecting on what I'm doing, reflecting on if it's working, and then figuring out new ways to do things if it's not working, uh, or continue to do those methods are working. Again, I'm Matt with Rublet. This has been how you can use test and commit or revert um, as sort of a micro framework for when you're building with AI. And it's the way that I've learned how to build, thinking from first principles, breaking down problems, testing things out and moving on if they work or rolling them back if they don't. Uh, turns out it's pretty useful. But as always, uh, I hope this video has helped you build better apps because I'm here to help you build the best apps possible. Uh, until next time, peace.